That's a bad miss. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and or Eevee is a streamlined return to Generation 1 Pokemon. A somewhat stripped down version of Pokemon Yellow, to be precise, except you can choose whether you've got a Pikachu hanging around you all the time or an Eevee riding around on your head, uh, as you can see here. It brings Generation 1 to the Nintendo Switch in a faster less involved way and despite that it's very fun a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be uh, I started to get a bit excited for it before it came out but I didn't think I'd be as in invested in it as I am uh, which surprises me because as I say it's uh, a less complex game taking a lot of mechanics from Pokemon Go the mobile game and putting them in here as you can see from the footage right now uh, collecting Pokemon is not about random battles uh, you find the Pokemon visible on the overworld uh, coming out of the uh, the grass areas you run into them and then very much like Pokemon Go you throw Pokeballs at them uh, you can make that a little easier on yourself by giving them berries to eat beforehand using different types of Pokeballs but it really is about just throwing the balls at them and, and hoping you grab them uh, the Pokemon I mean not the balls and it's a lot faster because of that. Uh, you move through the game at a more decent clip because you're not stopping all the time for random battles. Uh, collecting the Pokemon is swifter uh, and not less engaging because of it, I found. Uh, that won't be for everyone, but as someone who was who very much enjoyed Pokemon Red, it was back in the day, back when I was a youth. Uh, and I've had that experience, and I loved that experience. Uh, as an older person now, who doesn't have, I say who doesn't have so much time, I did spend all yesterday trying to get an Ekans that was perfect. And eventually I, I just decided to get a catch combo of 420 and leave it there. Um, it does take up a lot of time, but it is so much more immediate than previous Pokemon, than the mainline, shall we say, Pokemon games. That even though, you know, I do hope the mainline Pokemon games continue in their traditional form, I would not dislike more of this. This has had me more invested, I think, than any Pokemon game since the aforementioned Pokemon Red. I've not been into this kind of, like, into a Pokemon game with this level of fervor since I was a kid. And Nintendo's done some really clever things to get that investment going. Obviously, the more immediate nature, the quicker nature of catching Pokemon here is one way of doing it. Catch combos is another clever way of doing it. Uh, the more Pokemon you catch that are of the, the, the same type in a row, uh, you know, if you catch multiple Ekansies as you're seeing here, you get a catch combo, Z catch combo four. Uh, you get more experience as you collect the same Pokemon in a row, and you get a higher chance of getting Pokemon with better stats. They just become better as you move along the combo. And you also increase the chances of getting a shiny Pokemon. As you can see, I've got a shiny Ekans here. The game really lets you go to town on your love of the best Pokemon ever, that Pokemon being Ekans. As well as having the Eevee or the Pikachu uh, up your ass constantly, you can select another Pokemon to hang around with you. As you can see, I've got my shiny Ekans behind me, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Another thing the game does that on Nintendo's part is nefarious genius is to finally make the IVs, the previously hidden stats of a Pokemon, more easily viewable. Now, IV training, that competitive side of Pokemon, was never something I was interested in because it was just not all that immediate. It sort of bothered me because of my own mental hang-ups that I may not have the perfectest Pokemon in the world. But I didn't really care that much. This game, at some point as you go along in it, you unlock the ability to actually look at those stats, the uh, the inherent stats that are hidden from like view until you get the IV checker. Once you get that, you know how close to perfect your Pokemon is, and that just spurs you to want to make it more perfect. Either get a massive combo for catching them, or, you know, do some post-game finagling to get those stats boosted. And in doing so, and marrying that to the quicker methods of catching Pokemon, Nintendo get you hooked. I'm very, very grateful that Nintendo 
does not put microtransactions in these games because when I was hundreds deep in an Ekans chain, and that's not what it sounds like, I realised that if at that point they'd have offered like a little buck here and there to increase the chances of getting a better Ekans or to like nudge the stats of like, I got one with uh, six, uh, five out of six perfect stats. If they'd have offered at that right moment, that moment of weakness, of vulnerability, of despair, little buck to nudge that one stat into perfect territory, I don't know if I'd have had the fortitude to say no. And that's worrying. This is the kind of game Activision Blizzard looks at with drooling chops like a wolf at their door. Because the ways this could be monetized are so abundant. And it is somewhat admirable that Nintendo doesn't go for that. Uh, you know, Pokemon Go on, the, on mobile especially has uh, made a ton of money uh, with microtransactions, although that is free to play. Uh, if this were free to play, I don't know how much I'd have spent in it already. I do know that I've spent hours and hours playing it. The stuff that's traditional, like the battles here, works just as well as, as it always had. Uh, that's great. Uh, as I say, this is mostly a, a rebuild of Pokemon Yellow, a sort of Gen 1 Pokemon. It follows the same story beats. Uh, they've taken stuff from Pokemon Yellow, such as Jesse and James there in here. Obviously, visually, it looks really lovely. Uh, every Pokemon is uniquely detailed. Uh, the attack animations look really nice on the Switch. I will say that I think we've reached the point now, especially with this game where you've constantly got an Eevee and a Pikachu making their own distinct noises. I think we've moved past having, like, low-quality chirps. Old-school, nostalgic chirps for every Pokémon. I think we can give them all their voices now. I think we're at that point. Uh, I don't know if people find the old noises still really charming and want to keep them. But to me, it's just become glaring that some Pokemon are able to go, you know, peek a pee and everything else is going uh, I think we've, you know, let's, let's have them all with their own cute little voices now. You know, I want to hear a Cubone say, Cubone Bone, but again, might just be me. One thing this game does not have going for it though, is a, stock, a shockingly exclusive approach to controls in a game that's otherwise trying to be very inclusive. And it really, those two elements are at odds because this game forces motion control on its players. In handheld mode, it's not so bad. It has some gyro for fine tuning for aiming the Pokeballs at the Pokemon, but it's not all that obtrusive. Playing this game on the TV, however, I fucking hate it. Motion controls are forced into it, as I say, you can't turn them off, you can't use a pro controller or anything like that. You've got to have a Joy-Con in your hand, do everything on the one of them, and to catch the Pokemon you've got to flick the... you've got to flick the controller to hit them. I don't have the Pokeball controller so I can't speak to that. Uh, I don't have it yet, I should say. Um, I do want to try it out. But using the Joy-Con is a miserable experience. Some people are going to have a better time than others, and that's what I mean about the exclusivity here. Now, now, I don't have great coordination, uh, so there were times when I was sure that I was throwing the Pokeball in the right direction and it would veer off to left or right. And when you fight certain Pokemon that jump from left to right, the only way I found to be able to, at least half the time, uh, actually throw the Pokeball in the right direction, I had to flick my arm out to the sides like I was broken Matt Hardy doing a friggin' delete charm. Uh, my elbow has not thanked me for it. I had to dock the switch to record this footage. The moment I was done doing the recordings, I could not switch back to handheld mode quick enough. And this is coming from someone who, you know, just has some coordination issues. Anyone with worse issues than that, anyone with, um, you know, motor function obstacles, uh, anyone with, with some sort of disability is going to be at a severe disadvantage if not find the game completely unplayable because Nintendo, in its arrogance, wanted everyone to use motion controls. Seemingly because they thought if they made it optional, people wouldn't want to take that option, they'd want to play it traditionally. Which makes you think, 
Why did they put it in in the first place if they didn't believe people wanted to use them? That's ridiculous. But that seems to be the case. Because why force it otherwise when it is quite literally an inferior mode? It's less convenient than to just, you know, manually aim it using controls to throw the ball. It's a lot more fun to do it in handheld where, again, the gyro is not so obtrusive as the, you know, the Joy-Con stuff on TV. It's just better, quicker, more efficient, and less excluding. And for, a, again, for a company that wants to reach as many people as possible, that wants to have these really accessible games, and for a game that is as accessible as Pokemon Let's Go, it really is a shame that they decided that their technology was more important than their audience's comfort and enjoyment. And that, that's what it comes down to. Nintendo put its own hardware ahead of everybody else, which is just a very typical Nintendo move. As is the online for this. Uh, I, I don't care for the online features of this game at all. Trading involves having to put in three pictures of a Pokemon of your choosing before being connected to someone at random. Someone else who happened to use those three pictures at the same time. I don't like that at all. But playing the single player in a handheld environment, which is what I play almost everything on Switch with, uh, I loved this. I do have to say I love it. I do hate the drawbacks this game has. They have some really unnecessarily annoying drawbacks. And the catching mechanic can be somewhat annoying because it is down to throwing a ball, not just battering an enemy into submission, which is just a lot more reliable and, and a lot more immediately apparent. Uh, there are some drawbacks to the lack of random battles. Uh, in order to level up a weaker Pokemon to get it to party level, you've got to take all of your Pokemon out of your party, just have one in it, and then go catching, because you get experience per catch. That's the best way I've found to get a Pokemon up to snuff uh, once it hits that point where leveling alongside everything else becomes a case of diminishing returns. And having that option to get into battles whenever you choose is something that I miss, but it is a compromise. Uh, the catching mechanic they've put into this game is quite fun and engaging, and making those combo chains is, is incredibly interesting, I think. It's been a long time since I played a game and actually found myself grinding in it. I typically don't have time or patience for that anymore, but I was grinding away on this one. So it's a case of trade-offs, but I'm glad this is something Nintendo decided to experiment in, and certainly for me, it's an experiment that's paid off. I'm happy to see more streamlined Pokemon versions. Certainly if they're taking nothing away from the mainline series, which I, I believe Nintendo's already said they do intend to continue. But seriously Nintendo, I see more and more you're pushing for this motion control stuff again, while the Switch is riding high on just being a damn good console, and doing really well in handheld, which is something you seem to be now trying to usher people away from. Just drop it. If you need to force people to use a feature, that might not be a feature worth having. Certainly not a feature worth making Making mandatory. Anyway, who's playing this game and can trade me some shit? Let me know what Pokemon pictures you're using. Pictures you use aren't even an Ekans. What a waste. I got my shiny Ekans though, so really nothing else in the game matters.